One thing I remember was the light switch. How easy it was to turn lights on and off. At the refuse again, we had to use kerosene and fire. I mean, like the first time I sat on the sofa, I feel like so good. <laughs> Every time, like I, I would like stand up and sit down, stand up and sit down, like just to feel the, the same way. It was like kind of like, squeezy. <laughs> My name is Kasila. I'm from Nepal and I'm 16 years old. I am in 10th grade at David Douglas High School in Southeast Portland. His father was a lawyer like Atticus, only much younger. It's hard to believe I could not speak English at all just five years ago. Because Scott is his um, little sister. When I get older, I want to earn a good living and take care of my parents because they have taken such good care of me. Bhutan. I know my dad misses home. He and my mom are from Bhutan. They had a farm and they lost everything. In Bhutan, the government forced people from Nepal, people who spoke Nepali language, to move out. And so I was born at the refugee camp in Nepal. Until we came to America, the refugee camp was home. As far as I remember, everything I asked what I wanted to my mom or my dad, like they always gave me like even though like they didn't have anything, they always like had, um, you know, they gave me like whatever they had. My dad, like he, he worked so hard for me and my sisters. And my mom like would stay at home, like, you know, working for us, like cooking every day, you know. I don't know what my family would have done without Erko. Erko helped us find an apartment, even gave us pots and pens to help get our life started. Who studies English every day? Olga? Right now? Erko taught English lessons for my dad and my older sister. And then Erko helped both of them find jobs. Dill breathed his um, pain. A oh, patient breathe and have some. They gave me a mentor who helps me. I'm just going over to take. Sometimes we even go out and do fun things too. Today it does not seem so lonely. At school, a group of Nepali students meet once a week after school to speak our language and help each other with homework. But still, it hasn't been easy. Learning English, figuring out transportation, and the high cost of living. My family still struggles every day. When my dad was laid off from his job, my older sister had to quit school and start working to help pay the rent. I went to Dio Vendori at Irko, and he helped us get rental assistance from Irko. If the people came up with a small problem, they go to Irko. If they lose their job, if they lay off from their work, they go to IRCO. You know, it's very, very difficult to describe um, what happened if there was, if there is no IRCO. I'm so grateful for IRCO and grateful for the United States and my teachers. I just feel like that's what America is. People coming from all over the world and learning a common language and bringing pieces of their cultures and their religions together. That's what the United States is. That's what America is. And so I see them all as Americans 
from other places that are going to work together and learn to be Americans. And that's a big part of what I do, but that's also a big part of what ERCO does. When high school is over, I want to go on to college. I hope to earn a scholarship. I will never forget everything ERCO has done for my family. And when I'm adult, I want to help others just as ERCO has helped us. So I won't stop until I have achieved my big dream. I want to become a doctor.